All right, for today's GIMP tutorial, we're going to take this landscape and add a sphere. How cool is that? I love it. So if you're ready to get started, let's do it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to duplicate this layer. And if you want to follow along, you can find the image in the description below. So the first step is creating our sphere. So let's go up to filters, distorts, and selecting spherize. All right, it doesn't look like a sphere yet, but let's go ahead and click OK. We have a couple more steps to create the sphere. And the next thing we need to do is add a couple of guides so we can make a nice round sphere. So I'm going to place this at 650. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit more until I see that 650 right there. And then I can move my guide into position. Let's put one down here as well. All right, let's go ahead and zoom all the way back out. All right, I'm going to grab my scale tool next with shift plus S. Make sure your width and height is not locked together. That way, when you resize, it's not restricting to that aspect ratio. And once you get up here to the guides, it should lock into place. Now click enter or return. All right, we now need to cut out the excess around the sphere. So let's go ahead and create a new layer called drop shadow because we will use this for the drop shadow later on. Make sure you have it set to transparency. Click OK and let's grab our ellipse select tool. Now for the size, I want it to be exactly 650 by 650. So I'm going to type that in the size here within the tool options. And then I can move that with my move tool into position right here. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that snaps to the right and bottom guides. And then I'm going to grab my bucket fill tool, make sure it's filled with black and click inside to fill it in. Let's go ahead and go to select and deselect by clicking on none here. And here's the keyboard shortcut right here. Let's go ahead and move that down below the sphere. And with our fuzzy select tool, I want to click right here to make a selection. We're going to grab our sphere layer next and we're going to go up to select and invert the selection. Now click your delete key or your backspace key to get rid of the rest of the sphere or the outside of the sphere, I should say. All right, let's add a little bit of a twirl to our sphere, which is going to add to the roundness of the sphere. So we're going to go back up to select and click on invert. And then we need to go back to filters, distorts. And this time we're going to click on whirl and pinch. Now that's too much of a whirl or twirl. So we're going to drop this setting down to around 7 to 15, whatever your heart desires, whatever you think looks best. I'll go with 15 for now. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now I can go ahead and deselect with Command or Control plus Shift plus A. All right, with our move tool, I'm going to go ahead and move my sphere into position right above the road here. And I'm going to hide my drop shadow layer for now because I don't need that at this moment. Let's go up to view and click on show guides to hide those guides. All right. So step two is shading our sphere to add to the realism and to make it look more round than it is right now. So the first thing I need to do is add a stroke around my sphere and create a glow around it. Now, before I can do that, I need to increase my layer boundary size here by going up to layer and selecting layer to image size. That way the stroke isn't restricted to the inside of that sphere. All right. With our fuzzy select tool, I'm going to click and drag down until the entire thing is selected. And I can see that because I have a nice round selection here. Let's go ahead and create a new layer and let's call it glow. Make sure it's filled with transparency. Go ahead and click OK. Let's go up to edit and select stroke selection. So I'm going to do a solid color anti-aliasing line width of six. And I want the foreground color set to white. Go ahead and click stroke and deselect. All right, so that is looking a little rough right now. So let's go ahead and move this behind the sphere. And then we're going to go up to filters, blur, and select Gaussian Blur to blur this out a bunch. Maybe not that much, maybe a little bit like so. All right, click OK. 
and that's a little too intense so I'm going to drop the opacity down here until I find something that I like. So maybe right around 28 for the opacity. Again you can do whatever you like and whatever you think looks best. I'm going to actually drop this down a little bit more so maybe right around 15. Perfect. All right, let's grab our sphere layer here and add a new layer. And we're going to call this one shading, transparency again, click OK. Now comes the fun part. We're going to start painting on some highlights and shadows. But before we do that, what I want to do is make a selection again of my sphere so I can restrict my shading within it. That way it doesn't go on the outside of our new layer here. All right, with your paintbrush tool selected with the letter P. I'm going to go with a fairly large brush that might be too big. So maybe something like that. And for the hardness, I want it to be a really soft edged brush. So I'm going to set this to zero. So we're going to paint with white first and I'm going to start up here at the top and then come around to the side because we have our light coming from over here. I'm not really sure if this is where the sun is, but we do have a break in the cloud. So I'm guessing this is where the sun is coming from. It's probably more from the top down because we really don't have any long shadows. So I'm just going to go ahead and follow this little peak of light here since it's brighter. So what I want to do is paint a crescent type shape around our sphere right here. So I'm going to start up here. I'm going to paint and come down. Now don't worry about it being exactly perfect because you can always use a layer mask to fine tune it later on. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue painting here until I'm happy with the outcome. Now it's not looking much like a highlight yet and we still have to do some blending with it. But first what I want to do is I want to switch my foreground color to black and then I'm going to paint my shadows over here on this side away from the light. So same thing, nice little crescent shape. So something like that, that looks pretty good. And let's change the blending mode to, let's do soft light. And let's also drop the opacity down. Now I'm not really happy with how that looks right now. So I'm going to add a layer mask in white. And then I can paint with black to remove the highlights and the shadow as needed to make it look a little bit more realistic. And I may need to drop this opacity down just a little bit more. So maybe right around 30. So there's the before and the after. So it's starting to look a lot more round than it was before. So what I want to do now is add another layer. I'm going to call this one highlight because I just want to add a highlight this time. So same thing. I'm going to paint with white and I'm going to go fairly large this time and just create a nice big highlight right around the globe. So maybe something like this. Now for this layer, I'm going to choose overlay and I'm going to drop the opacity down for this one as well. And I may want to fine tune my highlight a little bit more by adding another layer mask and creating more of a crescent type shape on this one as well. I'm going to go ahead and reduce the size just a little bit and maybe drop the opacity down just a little bit more. All right, let's go ahead and deselect and step three is adding our drop shadow. So let's turn our drop shadow layer back on. Let's grab our move tool and move it into position. Now our layer boundary right now is going to restrict our drop shadow on the left side and the top here. So what I want to do is go up to layer and select layer to image size to reposition that. And now we can go up to filters, blur, Gaussian blur, and let's set this to right around 50 to 75, whatever you think looks good. I'm going to go pretty high here. I think right around 65 is pretty good. Go ahead and click OK. Let's grab our scale tool again with shift plus S. And I want to go ahead and grab the top here and pull it down to flatten it out. And it's starting to look like a drop shadow. All right, let's go ahead and grab the center here and move it into position. So maybe right about there. I think I want to use that Gaussian blur just a little bit more. Let's go ahead and increase this maybe to right around 10 or so. I think that looks good. Let's go ahead and change the layer boundary again. 
All right, to finish off our drop shadow, we're going to go up to mode and select linear burn, which is going to bring some of the colors from the road through the drop shadow to make it more realistic. But we also need to drop the opacity as well to blend that in a little bit more. How cool is that? Now, truth be told, I'm not really happy with this particular edit. I think the first time I did it, it looked 10 times better. Let's take a look at that first edit that I did. So I did a little bit more shading and spent a little bit more time. It's kind of hard to explain and do at the same time. So just spend a little bit more time with your shading here to help it look a little bit more round than my edit right here. So hopefully you learned a lot. And if you want to continue learning more about GIMP and elevating your GIMP editing skills, make sure to check out that playlist right there for additional GIMP photo effects.